Greetings, Robot Super Pals. I am back with more uh, comic reviews. I hope you had a good Christmas. Uh, happy Holidays. And uh, let me just get going. I have Wonder Woman number 39. And uh, it's by Gail Simone and Aaron Leprisky. And this is the conclusion of the current story arc, which... What is that name? Uh, War Killer? Okay, War Killer. And uh, Alkion uh, sets uh, Wonder Woman up against uh, what she calls her father, this big demon shadowy beast made of arms, uh, where it pulls her and she fights half the issue uh, with it underneath the water uh, while she's making, uh, Alkion is making her final uh, plays for the big kill for, uh, to, con to you know, secure her uh, leadership of the Amazons. Well, that's not going very well for her. Uh, also, we get an explanation of why the fuck the Greek gods were in those space jumpsuits at the beginning of, of Gale's uh, run. Uh, actually, beginning of uh, the Olympian story. Uh, and, of course, we see everybody kind of uh, get together here and uh, defeat evil. Uh, very good. Uh, also, uh, we have a rare moment of uh, Zeus realizing he's kind of a dick. Uh, at the end of this issue, and offers um, Diana the chance of being uh, a champion, uh, but she turns him down flat, um, realizing again that her home, she's being welcomed back into uh, Fair Mascara. Uh, I think we're getting a look at finally Gail being able to fully turn uh, the ship around. Uh, I've gotten a feeling reading the books that she's been uh, taking quite, taking a lot of care in changing uh, the ridiculous status quo that Heinsberg put into the uh, books, making her a special agent and shit like that. Hopefully the special agent stuff is uh, almost gone. Uh, five rent chips, very good. And Gotham City Sirens, uh, number seven, uh, by Paul Dini. Uh, this time Gullah March is in here. He's uh, being filled in by uh, David Lopez, who, uh, I guess the Inker is still here because uh, it uh, looks a little bit a uh, lot like his work anyway. Uh, it's the Christmas issue, and it's very similar to Paul Dini's Christmas episode of uh, Justice League, uh, where the characters kind of split off and have their own separate uh, holidays, however they uh, celebrate them. Uh, Poison Ivy goes on, goes to the rainforest, and quickly realizes that she actually misses Gotham City. Uh, Catwoman uh, spends some time with uh, Dick Grayson and Damien. And because uh, she realizes, well, I guess Bruce is gone forever. I might as well just, uh, you know, m uh, get better at connecting with uh, uh, these guys. And uh, probably the best part, though, is Harley Quinn coming home to see her family. That's right, we get to see Harley Quinn's family in this issue. Uh, we get to see her mom, her dad, her brother. And uh, I won't say anything specific. It's just a lot of fun uh, to watch them interact. Uh, that alone, I mean, if it was just those pages, that'd be worth uh, the cover price. And uh, and also, uh, at the end, it's kind of, you know, setting up a new house, headquarters for them. It's interesting. Uh, Dini has kind of created uh, a, sort of a new version of uh, Birds of Prey, except they're a little more sinister. Uh, than the birds of prey. Uh, so, yeah, love it. Five ram chips. Uh, meanwhile, the issue 18 of Madame Xanadu cost no man can say. Well, actually, it's uh, $2.99. Um, let's see, Matt Wagner and Amy Reader Hadley picking up where last issue left off, where uh, Morgan Le Fay shows up, uh, being the one who's been uh, possessing. Uh, uh, poor Betty Reynolds, and um, she hasn't made clearly uh, known why she is making this attack now, but uh, I, I don't know. I have a theory that has something to do with the oncoming uh, appearance of you know, the super characters. I, I don't know, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, but uh, really exciting. Also, Martian Manhunter John Jones has a, a appearance in it here, and actually it's a little more action-packed than usual. Uh, they actually uh, do some fighting here and there. Pretty cool. Uh, five round chips. And uh, a one-shot from Dark Horse. Uh, Willow. And...
and it's written by Josh Whedon and uh, drawn by uh, Cara Moorline. And uh, it's a beautiful cover by uh, Joe Chen. Uh, there's two There's two covers. There's one by Carl uh, uh, Moorline, which is very nice too, and uh, this one by uh, Miss Chen, which is it's a very stunning cover. And uh, it uh, fills in the gap of what, what's gone on with Willow. This takes place before uh, season eight, so it explains what she was doing and you know what her connection is with the snake lady uh, that she sort of uses as her kind of guide. And uh, the art is just very nice. I like Moline's work a lot. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, let's see. Josh, you know, writes Willow well, and that, you know, it's a small little simple story, and it's a uh, pretty fun, and uh, I loved it. Uh, five Ram chips. And meanwhile, uh, New Avengers issue... You know, in the old days, I knew where the fucking numbers were. Now, I have to look and figure out. I have no idea where they have the numbers now. Okay. The Marvel issue, especially back in the 70s, 80s, everything was like the, mar the banner right here, the picture of the guy, uh, and numbers very big, clear. Now I have to, with like DC and Dark Horse, I'm like, where the fuck are these things? Oh, right here, there. Uh, this is issue 60. Wow, we've already done 60 issues of New Avengers. Um, okay. Uh, we thought the story was over, but it isn't. Um, they were able to rescue uh, Luke Cage from, um, from uh, Osborne after Osborne had um, healed his uh, heart and uh, was going to basically keep him. Uh, they were able to rescue him. Unfortunately, they didn't realize that there was some kind of tiny thing that implanted on his heart. Well, guess what? Uh, instead of that being drawn out forever, they actually found it almost instantly. And uh, Doctor Strange and uh, Hank Pym, who has now taken up the uh, the name the Wasp, uh, it goes in the side, sort of. Uh, uh, let's see, what do you call that film? The when people shrink and do the surgery. Incredible, no, uh, the Fantastic Voyage. They do the Fantastic Voyage thing, uh, where him and uh, Doctor Strange go inside. Uh, my favorite line is Spider-Man, who says, Weird, you have two men inside you. Um, Bendis should be writing Amazing Spider-Man. Um, anyway, uh, very good. There's also a nice little punchline at the end with uh, their escape. Uh, and... That pissed off Osborn quite a bit. He is now ready to really start the war uh, with the Avengers. He wants them dead. He wants their families dead. And uh, uh, I guess we're all ready for the siege. I think uh, all the Avengers books are all set up, and next each one says continued in siege. So here we go. Uh, we got the big uh, change going on with uh, the war. I think. Uh, I think uh, probably Osborn is going to be taken down a couple of notches, maybe lose his power, uh, maybe return back to prison or, or uh, pretend fake killed. Uh, you know, good old-fashioned supervillain fake killed would be nice. Um, and uh, I think we're going to get a reteam of uh, the main Avengers. We got um, Steve Rogers back as Captain America, and Iron Man, I think, is ready to uh, jump back into the fold, and uh, Thor is back. So. Uh, we'll see what happens with all this. And uh, I will be reading at least the main books of Siege. I won't be reading every fucking thing that comes out. I mean, there's going to be like 50 different Siege books each month, so I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to probably stick with the main story. And uh, I'll let you know what it's like. Uh, that's kind of it, and I hope you enjoyed the show. Push the button, Lindsay.